Welcome students to today's presentation on uh, hypothesis testing and it's as you understand one of the most important parts of uh, statistical research and quantitative research and we have some idea about uh, how to perform these quantitative tests so this is a kind of a repetition of what we've uh, done already so uh, let's begin uh, this uh, presentation with talking about the research basics first and these are uh, things that we already know about uh, these nine points of research which begins from a topic selection basically we decide what is uh, the topic that I want to work on and then we do a systematic literature review of that and have a conceptual theoretical framework and finally uh, decide on either the research questions or a hypothesis clarification and that leads to research design data collection analysis conclusions and results so as, as we understand that uh, hypothesis clarification or research questions are a central part of our research basics. So it's important that we have a fair idea about how to do hypothesis testing in our quantitative tests. Uh, we also have some idea about what are independent variables and what are dependent variables. Dependent variables are the ones from which we get data and independent variables are the ones which which are, are thought to play a causative role in a cause effect relationship so they are either manipulated or you know different kinds of uh, independent variables or different uh, elements of uh, uh, independent variable are changed to see the effect on the dependent variable so that is why often we use the term predictor variable and outcome variable in place of dependent and independent variable of course, uh, the influence of moderating variables, the mediating variables, and the control variables must also be known. Uh, this is just for reference. Uh, uh, and once we have those uh, uh, data with us, we have to find out about the normality or abnormality of the distributions. So this is just to repeat what we already know. One of this is... Uh, uh, a normal distribution, the well-known bell curve, and the frequency of the scores right at the middle is, is the highest. So it uh, it basically uh, uh, it clusters around the mean. So when we have a normal distribution, uh, the, the majority of, of the observations would be uh, spread around the mean. And in today's discussion on uh, hypothesis testing, I will just talk about how far they are distributed, so on and so forth. Uh, when it's a skewed distribution, it could be left skewed or it could be high skewed. So here, uh, the uh, higher scores would have uh, uh, greater frequency or lower scores have lesser frequency. So uh, that is how we get a skewed population. In many of the parametric tests that we will talk about today and in many of the hypothesis uh, uh, assumptions that we'll uh, make, uh, normal uh, distribution is a very important requirement in statistics. And we'll talk about those normal uh, requ uh, those requirements of uh, parametric statistics in today's uh, uh, discussion as well. Uh, so this is a very very important uh, uh, distribution, the normal distribution, and we must know the very basics of this uh, normal distribution before we get ahead. And uh, this is the uh, uh, just uh, the standardized scores. And when we talk of standardized scores, we uh, subtract the observation from the mean and divide it by the standard deviation. So this is uh, uh, the uh, probability density function of this normal distribution. So there are two or three very, very important things that we have to uh, understand here. And that is why these normal distributions are important. And that is why we can make inferences from statistical distributions. We can make this uh, uh, inferences from these observations. So I will uh, give you some uh, live examples also, but uh, before that, let's just talk about what this means. So if I can, you know, just zoom it a little further to uh, explain it uh, uh, even better. Uh, so if you see that uh, this, the uh, Z score here is uh, zero because, you know, we have subtracted the uh, observ observed values from the mean. So this is where, uh, you know, it is centering around. So it could be any other score as well. Important thing to note here are these two points, uh, you know, minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. So if you have a mean and if you uh, have this distribution, then 95% of your population or 95% of your observations will be between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 standard deviations on either side of the mean. So if I subtract minus 1.96 uh, times the standard deviation, and if I add 1.96, or we can you know even uh, 
uh, rounded off to two. So between minus two standard deviation and plus two standard deviation, 95% of my observations will lie. Or the probability of, of uh, all the observations lying between uh, minus two and plus two is 95% or 0 0.95 if I can say that. So that is why this is such an important function. As you can understand, the probability of the small uh, uh, thing right at the end, it's just 0 0.025 and 0 0.025 on the either ends. And in today's discussion, I will explain that as well to uh, make uh, assumptions or to uh, draw inferences about our hypothesis. So when we have a normal curve, two very important things to know. First of all, it will be uh, spread around the mean and then this uh, minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 uh, standard deviation is an important function because these are the boundaries for 95% of the observations to lie. So this could be, for example, uh, you know, the height of people. So if, if I say the uh, uh, average height is uh, 5 feet 10 inches of, of uh, men in Bengal, then uh, if you just uh, from 5 feet 10 inches, if you subtract, say, for example, the standard deviation is uh, uh, 2 inches, for example, uh, I'm just giving you a hypothetical figure. So if 5.10 inches is the mean, then uh, you know majority of the uh, people will be around the mean. And two standard deviation would be uh, 5, point, uh, 5 feet 10 inches minus 4 inches. That would be 5 feet 6 inches. And uh, uh, you know two on the other side will be uh, 6 feet 2 inches. So between uh, 5 feet 6 inches and 6 feet 2 inches will be the 95% uh, of the population, the outliers, people who are below 5 feet 6 or above 6, point, uh, 6 feet 2 will be much less. So this is just from an everyday example. So when we talk of these normal distributions and when we talk of these probabilities, these are related to everyday life. These are not things which are uh, uh, unreal or these are not abstract concepts. These are very real concepts and we must be very clear about these concepts. And to take this rule further, uh, this is uh, known as the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule. So uh, if I take uh, one uh, away from one standard deviation away from the mean and one standard deviation uh, further from the mean, then 68% of the population will be between minus one and plus one standard deviation. So I keep on referring to these terms mean and standard deviation. In another class, I've already explained what is mean and standard deviation. So I'm not going to get into the details of that. But these are, these are two, two parameters which are so very important for any kind of a distribution. And if we know these parameters, we can have these parametric tests or the hypothesis testing that I'm going to talk about today. So 68% of the population will be between minus one and plus one of the mean. So if I have to talk about the uh, earlier example I just gave you that the mean height is five feet, 10 inches and the standard deviation is uh, uh, two inches, that, that means that between five feet, eight inches and six feet will be 68% of the population. Similarly, if I have to take the 95% of the population that will be between minus two standard deviation and plus two standard deviation. If I have to talk about the 99.7% of the population, that will be between minus three standard deviation and plus three standard deviation. So as you can understand, this is so very, this is a, such an important uh, uh, thing to know about these normal distributions. So this is not just about the shape of the curve and all that, but it gives us such an important input that if I know the mean and if I know the standard deviation, I can, and if I know that it's a normal curve, then with certainty, I can say that 99.7% of the observations will be between this and this value. So this is such an important inference to draw from just two or three things, uh, just two or three parameters, as I just uh, spoke of. Uh, uh, this I have uh, spoken earlier, just to give you an, an illustration of what uh, standard error means. Although in uh, hypothesis testing, we are not going to talk about a lot about standard error, but standard error basically means that uh, if we have a population, say, for example, which has a, a mean of three, and if I draw samples out of that, all these samples will have different means. So it's not possible that when I draw from a sample, so if it is a, say, for example, a sample of people in uh, uh, Howard, for example, and if I uh, uh, take in, you know, uh, samples of, of different kinds, then the mean of those samples will be different. At times it will be very similar to the population mean. At times it will be different from the population mean. So the population mean is three at times the sample mean. So just try and understand the difference between the uh, population and the sample. So if the population mean is three and uh, the uh, sample mean is three means they are similar. 
but at times they might be less or more at times when i draw samples from the population their means might be less than the uh, population uh, mean or it, it can be higher than the population mean but if i uh, draw them on on a curve or if i just plot them then i will get a normal distribution and the standard deviation of these sample means the standard deviation of the sample means is known as the standard error so that basically tells us how much the uh, how much is the range in the population so we are looking for standard uh, smaller standard error so error does not uh, mean the literal meaning of uh, there being some uh, uh, systematic error in that it's just a definition of uh, standard deviation of the sample means so this is what i've just explained uh, uh, so when we are uh, when we talk of these hypothesis testing we are assuming them to be parametric basically and parametric uh, tests assume statistical distributions and they also assume uh, three or four other conditions which i'm going to talk about so when you have a, a, a fairly large population which uh, whose parameters are known then uh, and you know if, if they satisfy the conditions which i'm just going to talk about then we will do the parametric test which 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 i will talk in a moment non parametric tests like the chi square test i did uh, uh, some time back they do not rely on any distribution and they can work even on smaller samples so even if uh, the conditions of validity are not met we can do those non parametric tests there are these four assumptions uh, for parametric tests uh, first of all they are independent so uh, independent means that every uh, uh, observation or every item has an equal probability of being chosen so they are independent normal i've just spoken of those normal distributions homogeneity of variance means the uh, variance in the population or the variance in, in in the observations is homogeneous across the uh, uh, sample it is not uh, uh, you know kind of uh, clustered at one end and it's not uh, thinner at the other end and most importantly the measurement has to be an interval scale we know about the uh, three or four different kind of measurements we know that there are nominal scales where we just talk of categories it could be categories of states or categories of people or uh, it could even be uh, binary ca categories like male female or you know those kind of categories so we have uh, the nominal scale we have the ordinal scale where we talk in terms of ranks uh, highest second highest third highest fourth highest or whatever and then we talk of these continuous scales where uh, they are basically numbers so uh, the numbers can be interval or ratio in ratio we are looking for a absolute zero at, but you, we don't have to get into that uh, the first part is that you know it it should be uh, 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 you know independent normal there must be homogeneity of variance and the scale must be interval so it 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 should not be a nominal scale it should not be ordinal scale it could be, it, it must be about number so it could be about your your salary your age your marks your your uh, how much you can jump or you know your iq or, or even the likert scales are regarded as numerical interval scales so these are the assumptions that we make in parametric tests uh hypothesis we uh, have to distinguish between what is my statistical hypothesis and what is my research hypothesis so uh, one example which i uh, love giving these days is about uh, my hypothesis could be that the time you spent on online classes has some impact on the uh, marks you get so if you spend uh, uh, better time on uh, online classes you get better marks or if you spend a higher time on uh, online classes you might get higher marks so that could be one of my research hypothesis so this is a premise or a claim that we want to test or it's a, it's a prediction that we want to uh, to test and we are suggesting that okay if a student spends more time on online classes he or she will get more marks in their examination so this is my research uh, hypothesis and this is what i want to prove so that is uh, the research hypothesis in statistics we have to start with a different thing in statistics we have to start with the null hypothesis because that is something that can be proved or disproved so very very important to understand the difference between my research hypothesis which is a prediction or a claim or a premise that i want to test and the statistical hypothesis where we have we are beginning with a null hypothesis because null hypothesis is something that can be proved or disproved so very very important to understand a distinction between two hypotheses it's 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 very different from the research hypothesis that we will 
talk about or which we generally talk about. So what is the null hypothesis? Null hypothesis assumes that there is no effect or it, it starts with the assumption that there is no effect. So it will assume that uh, doing online classes or not doing online classes has no effect on your marks. Or if, even if you do a lot of online classes, it has no effect on the marks you get or you do very little online classes, it does not have any effect on the marks you get. So this this is uh, 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 what we start off with. So null hypothesis is, a, is, an, is an important uh, tool because that is something that can be proved. That is something which uh, we can prove as we go along. Or uh, with the mathematical examples that uh, I, I just spoke of, uh, using a normal curve or whatever, these are the things that can be proved. So uh, we, we can begin with, uh, or we have to begin with null hypothesis during our statistical tests. So uh, we begin with the hypothesis that there is no effect or uh, whatever that uh, I'm trying to prove in, in my research hypothesis, we have to begin with the contention that there is no effect. So it could be about anything. It, 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 it could be about, you know, whether exercise has any impact on your weight loss. So you start with a null hypothesis that exercise has no impact on uh, losing weight. Or it could be about, uh, you know, watching too much of television does not make me dumber. So there is no effect of watching too much of television. So uh, eating uh, 500 grams of chocolate has no effect on, on my uh, health or on my uh, dental structure or whatever. So we always start off with null hypothesis because that is something which can, which can be proved with the data we have. So we have to have data and based on that data, we can prove or disprove uh, uh, the null hypothesis. So we always, always, always begin with null hypothesis because that is something that can be proved with the observations. You can just uh, have those independent and dependent variables and the observations. And based on that, after performing some very simple statistical tests using Microsoft Excel or SPSS or uh, manually, you can prove or disprove your null hypothesis. So I again want to emphasize that research hypothesis is very different from statistical hypothesis. In statistical hypothesis, we begin with null hypothesis. So basically what we do in null hypothesis is that, or uh, basically what we do in statistical hypothesis testing is that first of all, we formulate a null hypothesis. Null hypothesis suggests that there is no impact, that uh, there is uh, absolutely no impact between, uh, there is no impact of the research that we are trying to study. Then we formulate an alternative hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis is what my research hypothesis is. So if I uh, want to suggest that there is no impact of online classes on marks, the alternative hypothesis will be that there is an impact of uh, online classes on marks. Whether it is, it is positive or negative, we'll just see in, in one tailed and two tailed tests in, in a moment's time. But important to understand that this is uh, the alternative hypothesis is strengthened or my conviction in uh, alternative hypothesis is strengthened when the null hypothesis can be proved to be wrong. So I'm looking to, you know, uh, prove the null hypothesis wrong. So that is what my idea is, proving the null hypothesis wrong. Uh, and, and for that, we have to, you know, uh, start off with a test statistic. So it could be t-test. I will talk about that. And we have to find out whether the, our value that we are getting is, is higher or lower than that critical value. And then we'll have to specify an alpha level. I will just talk about those alpha levels, the p-values in, in, in a moment's time and then the assumptions uh, that we make and the, uh, we have to calculate the, those test statistics and then finally we reach the conclusion. So it's important that we uh, uh, make those uh, uh, or, or we know about these three things that are happening. Uh, so let's, uh, uh, you know, just uh, if I have to just put it very simply. So first of all, we have to uh, uh, have a null, null hypothesis. Uh, On, and the alternative hypothesis, then we have to have uh, the alpha level and test statistics. I will just talk uh, in a moment's time about what is alpha level and what is p-value. And it's very important for uh, students of quantitative methods to uh, know these things. And finally, we have to calculate those test statistics and uh, we have to draw inferences from there. So these are the basic three things that we are doing in uh, the null hypothesis significance testing. So uh, we have to now understand the most important part of hypothesis testing, which is about P values or the probability values. And uh, we have to give some time uh, to understand all this. So let's, let's just talk about uh, the probability. So as I said, we have to prove or disprove the null hypothesis. 
what is the null hypothesis null hypothesis means that there is no effect there is no effect of online classes there is no effect of exercise there is no effect of eating chocolate there is no effect of uh, watching television so we are trying to prove that the null hypothesis is wrong and to prove null hypothesis wrong we have to find out a probability value probability means how probable that is so we generally want to put that probability to very less and generally that value is taken as 5% so please try and remember that these are about probability of the null hypothesis being true the probability that there is no effect of these variables so we are beginning with this p value which is the uh, value for the probability of the null hypothesis being true and we keep that at maybe 5% or at times we keep at 1% so the usual criterion is 5% would mean 0 0.05 or it would also mean 0 0.01 at times so if the probability is very small if the probability of the null hypothesis is very small then we reject the null hypothesis if the probability of the null hypothesis is very small very small means less than 5% or 1% whatever value you keep so the uh, what i'm trying to emphasize is that this value is decided by us by the researcher that it could be 5% or it could be 1% so if the probability is very small then we reject the null hypothesis and if we reject the null hypothesis we gain confidence in the alternate hypothesis but as you can understand that we are keeping that value uh, point as 5% uh, or 1% uh, so that means that there will be some error there are times when the null hypothesis will be true but we will be rejecting it because you know we have put in a value we can never be certain in statistics it can never be you know absolutely certain there will be some value however small of the probability of certain other thing being true so there will be errors why because we have put that value so if we put that value at five percent the error will be more as you can understand if i put that at one percent then the error will be less or if i put that at 0 0.01 percent then it will be much lesser so it depends on the kind of uh, uh, test you're doing so in in case of clinical examinations that has to be very less the 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 uh, error has to be kept much much less because uh, type one error means false positive what does false positive means it means that i'm rejecting the null hypothesis when in case the null hypothesis is true so uh, I, i'm i'm sure that it should not confuse you because you know uh, researchers do often get confused between type one and type two errors but we must be very very clear about what these means right at the outset that type one error means false positive means we are uh, 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 rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true so that depends on the, your value that you have decided beforehand as i said it depends on the on the discipline in social science we often take it as five percent or one percent in behavioral science and psychology etc as well and then there is the type two error of, of a false negative that we are accepting the null hypothesis when actually the null hypothesis is false so these uh, errors have their own uh, 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 you know um, repercussions and we'll talk about those repercussions in a moment's time so important to note that the p value that i'm deciding whether it's five percent or one percent this is going to decide how important or or, or this is going to de uh, decide what my errors will be but uh, that value if i get if if i get my uh, probability less than these values then i will reject the null hypothesis so that is why this null hypothesis significance testing is uh, is dependent on these p values but there are problems which we will see in a moment's time so this is just again what i have just discussed right now that uh, when when the null hypothesis is is is, is not true and we reject null hypothesis then, then that is what we are doing correctly but when the null hypothesis is true that means there is no relation but then even then we reject the null hypothesis that is the type 1 error and type 2 error when when the null hypothesis is is is, is false actually but we accept null hypothesis so that is a false negative so very important to understand what is type 1 error and what is type 2 error because that has some impact on uh, uh, a lot of the other tests we do uh, important to understand the distinction between one tailed and two tailed test so i will just uh, give you an example of these one tailed and two tailed test so this uh, uh, one tailed test means we are just talking in one particular direction we are talking about uh, 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 you know our our uh, the, the mean being greater or uh, lesser than the uh, uh, null hypothesis so that is the alternate hypothesis and the other other uh, you know uh, so this is one tailed one tailed means it is saying that it is greater 
if you can see right at the top it is say, saying greater if we just say it's different than the mean then it will be two tailed and we'll talk about that in a moment's time but if we are saying that the mean of the uh, sample is greater than the population mean then we are talking of this one tailed test what is the uh, what is the other hypothesis it's uh, the uh, Yeah, this one is again a one tail test. So this is this is suggesting that the mean of my sample is less than the population mean. So one tail test is directional. It is telling you either this is greater or it is lesser than the uh, uh, sample mean or, or, or a particular value. So if I want to suggest that more time spent on online classes causes an increase in marks, this is one tailed because this is telling you that the marks will increase. Or the other way that if I spend more time on entertainment on these uh, uh, online channels, then it will lead to decrease in marks. So that could be one tailed. So very, diff very, very important to understand what is one tailed and two tailed. If you see this, this is two tailed. This is just suggesting if you see right at the top that my sample mean is not equal to the population mean. So not equal means it can be either less or more. So uh, there, there, is a, there is a very important difference between these one-tailed and two-tailed tests. In one-tailed test, we are saying either it is less than or greater than the mean. And in the two-tailed test, we are saying that it is uh, just different. So uh, I, uh, why are we uh, interested in one-tailed and two-tailed tests? Very, very important to understand. Because one thing which is related to the p-value is also the critical value. So they are basically the same. We, when we are disproving the null hypothesis, we have to either suggest that the p-value that we are getting is less than a particular value or the critical value. It could be a t-value or your, your, your f-value in ANOVA or your z-value that the critical value in the present sample is more than that critical value. So if I'm having these one thing, the, the, the critical value for this is 1.65. So if I'm getting a critical value more than 1.645, I will reject the null hypothesis. So uh, as, as, as you can see this uh, uh, very importantly, that when I'm having these uh, 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 two-tailed tests and, and one-tailed tests, so, so, so these uh, 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 one-tailed tests are more stringent than these two-tailed tests. We have to be very clear about the three or four things as we go along. One of is it is known as the statistical power. So 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 just p value is not enough because uh, there are lots and lots of problems with p values. So the ability to find an effect in this uh, uh, in a, in a, in my uh, sample is known as the statistical power. So very important to know what is statistical power. And statistical power is basically one minus beta. Beta is the uh, type two error that I have just spoken about. So uh, it, it's important to, to uh, you know, uh, reject the, so statistical power is the effect to reject null hypothesis when it is uh, uh, false. So uh, that's a very, very important thing. So we also have to provide confidence intervals and effect sizes. And it's important that, uh, you know, there are times when there might be some kind of correlation between two variables, but the effect size could be very small. And we have, we've seen correlation and we know that the correlation coefficient could be very small. So there could be an effect size which is present, but it could be very, very small. So just p-value, just these uh, you know p-value significance testing is not very enough most of the times. And one of the tests we do in the uh, you know, statistical test is to uh, do the t-test, which is a very good example of uh, you know, one kind of uh, 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 hypothesis testing. And what we actually do there is uh, we try and find out whether there is a, a difference in mean between two groups. So is there a difference between uh, the marks of uh, uh, you know, male students and female students? So uh, my null hypothesis will be that there is no difference. And if I get that there is no difference in marks between male students and female students, but if I get my p-value as less than 0 0.05, then I will reject the null hypothesis and I will say that there is a difference in marks between uh, male students and female students. So when I'm uh, comparing means between two groups, I'm doing the, that kind of a t-test. So that, that again is a very, very simple way of uh, doing uh, 
uh, uh, uh, hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing is, is, is a very important kind of testing where we have to understand the limitations of the p-value and also know the uh, impact of these uh, uh, normal curves and you know how much of it is more or less or whatever. So these are very, very important things to uh, understand and remember. So uh, 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 that's all. Let me uh, finish this right here.